Probably not. Okay, uh, good. I have not looked that's, at it. It's good. It came it's out good. today, right? Yeah. I just okay. in in my business, if I don't watch it morning of, some motherfucker oh, well, will spoil it for me. Well, you had a comic book shop. Yeah. Someone's going to come to you early, yeah. <laughs> early in the morning. Yeah. People are pretty good about asking. Man, that but... red wedding, dude. Yeah, Fuck exactly. You. Yeah. People are pretty good about asking us, but yeah, you never know. Someone's going to be like, oh, I can't believe this happened. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah, I've started watching it in the mornings on Wednesday or else I can't. It's okay. It doesn't like ruin a relationship or anything. I still remember ruining Hold the Door for me very vividly oh, specifically, man. but it's not like. I don't remember who it's it was. It's not like that's defined our relationship going forward at all. I don't remember who it was, but I do remember someone ruining it and me being super fucking pissed about it. And if I bleep his name, I don't think I'll use that story as a cold open. <laughs> Episode 428 of the TV Dudes recorded March 23rd, 2023. Physical 100. This week, it's Patron Week as we tackle Netflix's Physical 100 by Patron Request. We've also got thoughts on the latest episode of Ted Lasso and Party Down. Before we get to all that, I'm Randy. I'm Les. And I'm Nick, and I'm here to pump you up. And we're the TV dudes. Y'all, uh, Max, we've talked about Max before. Max, a patron who uh, misunderstood because we weren't clear how the patron system works and basically was a, was a showrunner for longer than anyone else ever will be. And as a result, Max gets to pick shows for the rest of his life. Wow, that's a lot of power. Yeah, it, it is. It is. That's too much power in I mean, one person's like, hands. Like the, is that like Norman Jewison level? Like what what level of of showrunner are you here? He has, you're you're he letting has, someone run your life, Randy, in a way where they you could watch a lot more anime than you ever meant to. He seems to be a benevolent dictator and has has, has, has taken <laughs> account that I that I hate anime. Max, the benevolent dictator of TV dudes. <laughs> Uh, that I'm not going to watch a, a lot of anime. If he gave us six anime, then I'm going to watch like two of them. So, uh, but he gave us instead uh, the show Physical 100 on Netflix, which I uh, a friend of mine had recommended to me. And she recommended it to me on the basis of, this is a good thing if it's the kind of thing you like. It is not the kind of thing I like, and we will talk about that. Uh, sure. But that's our main show. We also have some great dessert because Ted Lasso is going right now. Party Down is going right now. Uh, but before we do any of that, we got to start with appetizers. And uh, why don't you all start us with appetizers this week? All right, Nick, you start. Oh, sure. I was just going to go through all the stuff that wasn't on your diary, but uh, we forgot to talk about Hunted last week, the British uh, dangerous game movie we watched, which was pretty good. Really was. It had mm -hmm. Trent Crum, the independent. Of the independent, yeah. Oh, Formerly. Okay. Too uh, bad it wasn't an independent movie. No. That would have really worked mm -hmm. for the joke. Yeah, it wouldn't have. Uh, it would have. Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, you know, just your classic most dangerous game, criminals break into a house and fucked up by doing so. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it was it was really good. It's uh, one of those where it's not revolutionary, but it makes a lot of really good small decisions throughout that keep things interesting and flowing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a few dumb moments, but there's some really smart things that there's you, a few things that keep it from the hunt. The, yeah. The hunt level, but still very fun. Also, I got less to watch Polar. Yes. Which I mentioned to him beforehand of like, now this is a movie that has a good idea that I think they accidentally, like they did on accident. Like it's not. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems to be a movie about, uh, is it Mads Mikkelsen? Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, as the old guard, like he's at retirement age, uh, crazy covert assassin, John Wick type world. Mm -hmm. And basically his John Wick style assassin employer has a 401k and they don't want to pay it out because he has a crazy amount of money in his. Uh, and so they send like all the upstart, like smoking aces style. Like they send like way too many upstart, young, stupid, hothead assassins after him. Okay. And he just fucking wrecks, wrecks them. them. And where it is this, where it is a movie about the old guard, boring John le Carré type, the like, 70s hitman versus yeah. the modern day suicide. Like they even are introduced with their own little like blurbs in a suicide. Like, like yeah, yeah. So like like the super serious, you know, yeah, like 70s assassin versus suicide squad. And like that movie's a blast and they get it over with in the second act. Yeah. Because I, I don't think they realize what they're doing. I thought this sounded familiar. This was a this was a graphic novel. Yes. It is, yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh and and yeah, then the third act is disturbing and weird and violent. <laughs> and like I'm not saying it doesn't have some badass action scenes, but by that point you're like, the 
fuck are we doing here? Also, I can't believe it has one of the only moments where the good guy enters a like bad guy compound and the henchmen, the stormtroopers, just go, fuck this, I'm out. Yeah. Like <laughs> like a platoon of like eight guys see him on a on a screen and are like, Nope. Fuck yeah, you. never mind. I'm not getting <laughs> paid enough bail. for this. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it does hold it back of like, what if John Wick, instead of about being getting revenge for his dog, what if it was about in, of insurance fraud? Yeah, it, it's weird, man. Yes, that's not, I don't think that was a particularly good decision, but no. We I also watched a little bit more of History of the World, uh, a mm-hmm. couple more episodes of that. I I really liked the Gettysburg thing going forward. I think that that bit gets funnier. It gets better, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I like the the Indian doing stand up com or no, Native American they call Indian doing stand up Amer- stand up comedy, uh, observing like. I'm just yeah. saying, if you're going to colonize, uh, if you're going to genocide a whole species, you should get something better out of it than Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that bit was great. Anytime they do that really callous, like, I, I'm just telling you, if you need to, uh, Hitler on ice, if like, if you're going to, gen- if you're going to, you know, put concentration concentration camps in people's com- in countries, you better be flawless on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are like the moments where it just like, z- like. A, a, when it a sings, it on Earth, sings. Like a, a Charlie Booker joke just like zings past of like, what the fuck? That was dark. Yeah, and then we watched the what Les has down here as the Space Marines franchise. Uh, oh, I remember they did, they did a pre-make of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, from Ted Lasso. They did a pre-make of that. Yeah, so... Uh, Space Marines was the original title of the spec script that became Leprechaun 4 in space. And uh, at no point in that entire movie is he referred to as a Leprechaun ever. Uh, But uh, we watched six Leprechaun movies. However many there are except the last one. Yes. What What is happening? I I feel like I need to take TV away from y'all. It's (laughs) You're, you're misusing you're not, it and you're and not it's using like, it responsibly you will get this back when you yeah. have shown you can be responsible like if with we freeze it, it like this back we you were supporting just the Wars, career like... of warwick davis <laughs> mostly Dude, you gotta respect warwick davis kills it in those oh man movies. warwick davis really uh chews as much scenery as possible through that much mask <laughs> and how the Friday the 13th franchise is with mythology or mythos, the Leprechaun franchise is with rule sets of yeah. how Leprechauns work. To to a brag degree, <laughs> the, the directors of Leprechaun movies frequently change every movie or every couple of movies. And they they a couple of them have outright bragged about having not seen any previous Leprechaun movies mm-hmm. like it. it the either way weird, like the rules flex. his powers the rules they all just change like like suddenly there's a movie halfway through where the director was like yeah i'm new to the franchise but i kind of felt like he was overpowered with all his telekinetic being able to fly <laughs> stuff around and shit so now he's just really strong that's it yeah like wait what well it's my head canon <laughs> that less you were saying that it's uh, it's bit related that yes. he can do it but it has to be a comedic bit if it's like it's like it's pleasing a the cabin in the woods gods we don't see yes if it, they don't find it funny it won't work genuinely all of the leprechaun's powers feel like wily e. coyote like he could run the gap between cliffs if no one shows him a sign explaining gravity yeah yeah like that it's it's very yeah like that feels like how all his powers and wishes and shit work oh yeah well if you capture a leprechaun you get three wishes except for no now the next movie only in one of the movies but no the next movie is now for each gold coin you get a wish yes (laughs) no wait now the next movie is that the cold coins are just uh uh infinite money yes and then in the next movie he's just strong but in one of them there's ice tea has that ice tea steals ice tea has a gold flute in one of them (laughs) ice tea takes a baseball bat out of his afro to beat yes davis yes Ice T in the start of this movie has this huge fake afro. I assume fake. It's huge, uh, and he reaches into it and just pulls an entire fucking baseball bat <laughs> from it. It's like undercover brother for a minute. In like a clear sight gag, <laughs> just like like yeah. In their own little low key way, this franchise just stops giving fucks. <laughs> what if we never gave fucks to begin yeah. with? Less that's and, the... and then stopped. <laughs> That's our secret, Cap. Yeah. <laughs> we like never it, gave it a fuck to begin with. Absorbs fucks from things nearby that care. Yeah, and then, oh my god, me and Les saw, found something on Netflix that, or I... He did. found it one morning. I literally, I woke up one morning, Nick's staying at my house right now, uh, woke up one morning and was like, the hell is on? Agent Elvis. 
Yeah, I knew about I knew about this. Priscilla yeah. Presley created a show mm-hmm. about Elvis mm-hmm. and his DEA, which really happened, him going to Nixon mm-hmm. and and getting a DEA agent badge or whatever, which made it really easy for him to get pills. Uh, <laughs> but his letter about I have studied communist mind control techniques and am uh, in a position inside the drug, like like he wrote this insane letter to Nixon, uh, that's public record, and uh, and then this just. Like, what if that were Bond? Yeah, and he gets recruited by Don Cheadle, who is part of, like, the organization is TCG. Or TCB. Taking care of business, right? Taking care of business, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but they call it something different, but that's clearly what it's it's his... Yeah. Yeah. And there's so much Elvis lore and shit. Like, when I was watching it, I thought it was funny. And then suddenly Les starts laughing... For like what appears to me, no reason. Yeah, like, like I, I realized that like Nick's just laughing, and I, I'm like, no, that's that's a thing. Like, no, <laughs> but he's, that's real. But his his chimp he owns is throwing TVs in the air so he can target practice with them. Like, that's not real. But, but this monkey is. Parts of that are real. He shot a TV. Uh huh. He did own a like a monkey. Like, God damn it, scatter! <laughs> oh man, and Matthew McConaughey doing. A, now that's a, like an overcranked McConaughey is great. Now that is the point of now that must have been the easiest pitch in the world yeah. of walking into a fucking producing room like okay I have an idea uh what if Mike what, what if Matthew McConaughey was Elvis cool here's 3 million dollars. Uh okay. Yeah, Johnny Knoxville's having a great year. Uh he is also yeah. in this. He, yeah, he's the sidekick in it. But man scatter their uh coke doing their coke doing crazy ass <laughs> ape. Dude, they even make fun of the, the he's doing a movie where he's playing a fucking doctor that I think cures cancer, like cures a t- tumor with and, and good all, thoughts. All the movies they are real. Ro- the nuns are going to about to roller skate. And I'm like, Les, this, what is this movie? This yep. can't be the plot of what this movie is. Nope. That is uh, Elvis's last screen appearance. Change of habit with Mary Tyler Moore. Mm-hmm. Again, <laughs> not making any of that up. Did Mary, Mar- <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore just say fuck? Okay. I officially <laughs> love her. <laughs> it, man. It has the, what's her name from Always Sunny as the, like a combination of Lana and Archer secret agent. Right. Caitlin Olsen. Yes. yes. I saw that. And, and she just doesn't give it like, she doesn't give a shit about Elvis. Like, oh yeah, no. I mean, your movies are hilarious. Not the comedies, but. There's a compliment. Pop them in there somewhere. Look, take it's in it. there somewhere. I don't know. How much yeah. is that? Uh, you couldn't afford it. Maybe Beatles money. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, I knew about this. I guess I had not put together that Priscilla Presley was involved with it. That is the shock. Right? To me. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of banana shit happening in that show. <laughs> we haven't finished it, but God willing, we will. Yeah. Uh, Les, you, you can finish off whatever. Uh, so I here. finished out uh, Mayor of Kingstown, which uh, it just wrapped up season two, I believe. I think that was the season finale. Uh, man, that it's... Oh, to I saw say, some of that. To say that is the weakest taylor sheridan show still makes it one of the best like organized crime shows i've seen in a long time the motherfucker yeah. knows story structure and it i mean does. like and I, I like i can't like it it's one of the most fun things i've watched and like i watched it week to week and was excited every sunday that i could watch it and also it it feels like the least awesome thing he's done and that's remarkable <laughs> um, you know it's funny i uh i watched the first one as a binge and i'm kind of glad that i saved this one to do the same with yeah yeah it's more fun that way um, I would, I would definitely say like w- waiting week to week was killing me. Also, I can't stress enough. Gods, please hear me. I, I would watch bunny come up. I want to see how that motherfucker took over. I love bunny. He is so charismatic. Uh, God, they, they do a thing this season where like somebody gets robbed and like, yeah, big six foot four charismatic motherfucker remind you of anyone i'm like that's all they have to say like, <laughs> like everybody knows it's bunny <laughs> i do love that like yeah the this is like when den of thieves where it wanted to go i love that taylor shannon is like nah fuck cops oh yeah man the cops are just as bad one of the gangs oh man uh of course 30 rock kept up on 30 rock uh daisy jones in the six has remained good uh it, not quite the show i wanted but it's still uh, really enjoyable let's see I talked about Luther last week. Uh, Fanny's watching Poker Face for the first time through, so I've been getting to rewatch those. Man, they're a fucking joy every single episode. <laughs> every single one. Uh, in fact, I'll bring up Poker Face again when we get into Swarm. Watch, obviously, the Space Marines franchise. Uh, all the Leprechaun movies are fantastically bad, but also fantastic. They're like a Hallmark movie in that way. 
Um, <laughs> of course, watched uh, Agent Elvis, we were talking about. Ted Lasso, which we'll talk about. Uh, Shadow and Bone. Uh, glad to have it come back and ready to sit down and go through the... I did not get to finish the whole season, but we'll discuss. Interesting. Yeah, I, I watched the... I just watched the first episode back, and I kind of realized it wasn't for me anymore. Oh, really? It, 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 we'll, we'll discuss. Of course, watched uh, Physical 100, which we'll talk about. Uh, Swarm and Polar. Uh, the absolute craziest thing I watched this week uh, before we discuss... Uh, I'll, I'll discuss Quantum Leap on Randy's. Fanny showed me a movie that she grew up with in one of those, like, go into a babysitter's house with a bunch of kids every day after school when she was in, like, fifth grade or so, and watching whatever the shit got put on, you know, here, kids, watch this movie. Uh, and that's how we all saw disturbing shit, like uh, Watership Down and <laughs> yeah. Last Unicorn and uh, yeah. Never Ending Story and a bunch of yeah. soul-shaking things. Well, oh, shit, for whatever unicorn. reason, she saw the pirate movie. And, Randy, I don't know if you remember ever seen like, if i showed nope. you the box art you'd remember it from a video store it's it's okay, one of those right. like i never rented that and it is a modern by modern i mean like 1982 or so oh shit i remember like this yes uh, it is a modern retelling of pirates of penzance <laughs> pretty weirdly on they update yeah. some of the words which are hilarious like the update to modern major general is like it talks about the beatles and the rolling stones and star wars and shit and it and it all I mean, it's either going to work for you or, or really not. But, like, it works as well as the f fucking Wiz or something does. Uh, at least. Uh, it is so insane. The The funniest thing about it to me is that the main uh, heroine, Christy, yeah, Christy McCall, mm -hmm. keeps breaking the fourth wall. So, like, as dumb things happen, like, like she basically meets the boy and they, they just, like, look at each other longingly from across a seashore for most of a song as they, like, slowly run towards each other. And like when the song ends and like they kiss and like start to head off, she looks straight at the camera. It's like, God, that was a short love scene, right? I mean, right? It like, oh my God. Okay, this is Christopher Atkins. the The male lead is the guy who two years earlier had done the Blue Lagoon. Okay, that's which, why he looks familiar. Which, mm -hmm. which explains the pirate movie. This I never saw this, but I definitely saw this at video stores. I would look it up. Uh, it's him shirtless and Kristen Van Nickel shirtless. Wrapped in a pirate flag with a bunch of pirates, it looks like an Animal House party movie. Yeah. Like the the pick, like it's it is it is promising. I'm sure what it does not deliver. No, it is manic insanity. Like it is absolute crazy. Like like just zany weirdness. Lots of little uh, asides and and like burns under the breath. Like it it felt like watching brain donors or or stiff upper lips or something. Like like a scary movie level of like send-ups about this kind of shit for a genre that nobody watches enough to need a send-up of <laughs> like yeah apparently it did badly in the theater but yeah so I, of course i acquired a three dollar copy on vhs and we watched of course it. uh so yeah uh, the pirate movie i thought it was awesome i'm gonna make nick watch it <laughs> <laughs> make me <clears throat> to stop twist me. your arm like that <laughs> also, I don't at the risk of starting a conversation I don't want to have, but I do have to know. You've made me think of a movie I haven't seen in ten uh, in ten years. Obviously, The Last Unicorn is that movie about a wizard that wants to fuck a, a unicorn that turned into a, or a human. Not exactly. Okay, uh, cool. No, yeah. we can leave it at that. I was just I just want to make sure that wasn't the plot that I'm remembering. <laughs> no, not not quite. Uh, it, it is a little better than that. Actually, that, that movie actually holds up really well. Except there is a huge breasted tree that tries <laughs> oh, to rape that wizard yes that's right She's oh man at least sexually assault that wizard. oh it's coming back oh wow it's a very voluptuous tree <laughs> i mean it's, you know flow him if you silent what if we animated evil dead the opening yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say there's there's yeah, that's, that's, right, right. evil dead yeah all right um randy please I, continue I, all right okay so uh, I watched episode nine of Shrinking. Uh, I believe the season finale of that is coming this week. I really, really like that show. Watched uh, the first episode of Swarm, which is from the creative team. It's from Donald Glover and one of the creators of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And it's got Dominique Fishback, who I really like. And uh, you guys watched two. I only watched one. I found this hugely unpleasant to watch. Yeah, it is definitely. It's... Yeah. It, it, it's it's weird it's disturbing there's not really any sympathy you can gain from the, the main character since she's an yeah. obsessive fan 
uh, it really links her fault with her the demise of her friend that I won't mm-hmm. go into, but yeah, yeah, in a in a way of like she's gonna go out and get revenge, and I'm like, dude, if you're looking to kill yeah, anybody, you, like, you did this, yeah, like this is, yeah, dude, no, this is she, on you. I I read a thing that in the pitch for this, Donald Glover brought up, I think a a tweet or a, a meme that had gone around of like why are why are black women in TV shows always like a hairdresser or a single mom in college or somebody's best friend or yeah. And he was like, you know, we could be insane. We could be serial killers. We could be. And, and like kind of took that as like that, that basically this is a, a true crime story told in several murder, like several murder episodic murders building up to yeah. something. I don't know what I haven't finished it out, yeah. but, uh, but that from what we saw in the two episodes, She's either opportunistic or the most lucky person on earth, but most of what she's doing, she gets away with because no one, like everybody's a little put off by her because she's fucking weird, yeah. but yeah. nobody thinks she's that immediately dangerous. Right. It's and she, wrong thing to think. yeah, because she is uh really quick, like just, uh, I'd like to think if I ever met her, I'm like, I'm not going to know a car alone with you. I, I, <laughs> no second all, locations all, no second locations all i keep thinking was like okay even the people that know i need to get away from her they don't know that like you need to back out of the room like now like now yeah. like like yeah as soon as you realize something's wrong with her you need to take a level of precaution that would be insane mm-hmm. and, yeah. and like so it, the the second episode helps solidify that of uh, we watched most of the second episode going what in the fuck is happening here because it just seems yeah. to time jump ahead with no yeah. repercussion for the first episode. Yeah. So yeah. But there is fallout. She's on the run. It's basically mm-hmm. like I said I was going to bring up poker face. It in the second episode you realize that like, oh, she's on the lamb and so she's made this like a mission from God. She's hunting down the people in that the second tweeted, episode tweeted mean yeah, stuff. There was a guy named Reggie in the tweet thread in the first episode that said uh, fuck it, she got what she deserved. Yeah. Uh, and okay. So you realize like halfway through, like, hey, did, did she say the guy that she was like, she asked the guy like, hey, where's your friend in the hat? And he's like, who, Reggie? Like, wait a minute. Yeah. Did did she just decide, well, I've got to run. So I'm just going to run to run to because she looks at his pictures, sees what hat he's wearing, what team he roots for, and, and where so, she needs to go in the vague general. Yeah. Like now with her friend dead, she's just a crazy woman with nothing. Well, also, she's it would be one thing if she was hunting down people that might have been responsible. But no, these, all these people tweeted after her friend died. No, when she meets Reggie, like he is actually They're, really decent and nice to them. Yeah, because some people are just shitty online. Yeah. And he like doesn't remember having said that. Like, oh, shit. I'm, you know, sorry. I'm sorry. You asked me about something I tweeted a year ago. I, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Uh, that said, it's also pretty basic. Like, it, it has a real basic slasher movie thing going. Like, like yeah. when you watch something like, uh, I know, it, shit, Silent Night, Deadly Night, like, like slasher movies that just barely have a gimmick. Like, like it's just a dude moving room to room, killing a family. Yeah. that's kind of what this has going on. Like there's, there's not a lot here. And, and I have that hipster feeling of like, I'm having to like for, for me to go off about like all the deep themes and everything here, I feel like I'm having to do some work, that do them, some work that the yeah. fucking show and isn't I, really you know, doing. Maybe there's a college, yeah. I'm sure there's a college thesis getting written out there about why I am dead wrong on this. And mm-hmm. I am definitely open to having somebody point something out that I'm like, fuck. Uh, yeah. But right now, I mean, I'm, I'm two episodes in, but I'm, it's fun. I watch a lot of fucking slasher movies. I, you know, like, so, mm-hmm. so there's yeah. something inherently fun about this, but man, it is not Atlanta for me. Yeah, that's the thing. I, there were people who soured on Atlanta. I was never one of them. I loved every episode of Atlanta, even with as weird and self-indulgent as it got. I loved every episode. And this, this doesn't rise to the level of even the lowest of Atlanta. I'm like, this is what you decided to do next. And I found it just, I found it thoroughly unpleasant. I didn't find it darkly funny. I didn't find the characters interesting. Even the weird shit in Atlanta had significant meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. it may not have tracked logically, but also yeah. thematically what it was doing with the characters really tracked of like the, I always bring up the, the parking garage episode yeah. where they're meeting their previous exes. Like it's like a twilight zone episode within itself, yeah. but it's, it's yeah. talking about where they are in their relationship right now. Or, or even something like the standalone with the loop 
where uh where Paperboy where Alfred goes to yeah. the uh canceled club and shit and ends up like back in the alley walking past himself. Like that was a that was a Black Mirror level thing. Yeah. And and I I guess I I didn't expect Atlanta, but I kind of thought that their horror show would be like a, a Black Mirror thing and I thought they'd be not a like a pretty it. straightforward slasher thing. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's I, I like I like the seventies vibe of how it's shot. Uh, but Michael Jackson's kid is in it for a minute. Yeah. Paris Jackson's in it and delivers the funniest line in episode two. <laughs> I have, like, yeah, I, oh man, the girl the girl is tuned out. Dominic Fishback is just tuned not out. Not listening to her at all. Like, yeah, not listening to Paris Jackson at all, sitting at this at this diner counter, and Paris Jackson has determined to make friends with her. Which we're just Nick and I are sitting there like, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, get the fuck away from her. <laughs> uh, so in the middle of the conversation, Paris Jackson's like yeah, besides, I, I think my uh, previous boyfriend's family had a problem with, like... They didn't, couldn't accept that They I'm couldn't black. accept that I'm black. And it's the first time in, like, the whole episode, like, Dominique Fishback looks up, like, the, ha- what? And she says, half what? Or, oh, yeah, because my dad was half. <laughs> half what? <laughs> like, she just looks at it like, okay, like, the math she, doesn't add up She there. never follows up on it, but, it, but, like, she just literally, like, goes from vegetative state to like what (laughs) like it'll drop like if you if you're getting the attention of dexter or whatever like you've said something real weird sit me down an entire fucking you uh wikipedia rabbit hole about (laughs) paris jackson right like i it it, it delivered the the show stop line in an otherwise weird series (laughs) uh so you're gonna finish this out you're gonna watch more of it i Uh, I don't think i will but i don't uh, know the the second episode made me think of, like definitely after the first episode I'm like man I feel like this is not gonna go fucking anywhere and then the second episode yeah. I was like oh this has a structure to it this feels like we're doing building to something but from what I hear I have several yeah I've uh, separately heard the ending is shit to the bed on it so yeah I I don't know they're they're thirty minutes long or so uh, I may watch a third one and see where I'm at the second one was an improvement well if you know it may be like previous shows we've watched of like nope that was the weird one. We're back to shit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. National treasure. The other thing that was supposed to be... Oh, man. National, I've forgotten that one. That's what it was. <laughs> Welcome to the only show that's going to compare National Treasure on Disney Plus <laughs> to Swarm. To swarm. <laughs> now, that's what you get on TV, dudes. Mm-hmm. That's what you get. Um, so, the other show that was supposed to be one of our main shows, and I watched one episode and warned you guys off of it, was Extrapolations, which is an anthology show uh, from an American filmmaker maker and playwright um named scott z burns um who nothing sounds more promising than i'm sorry scott so, z burns z burns so, okay well that's a fake name so yes uh but he wrote he's written some stuff for steven soderbergh he wrote the born ultimatum that's someone's drug dealer made movies then then he then he wrote the informant which is actually really fun oh okay uh, he, yeah he wrote he wrote contagion I like the informant um then he wrote he wrote side effects which i didn't see Ooh, side effects is really fu- that's a real good uh that's Soderbergh, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's a and fun then, one. And then he wrote the report. So it looks like this guy does a lot of sort of political, serious, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh and that that fits with what what extrapolations is. Extrapolations mm-hmm. is a anthology that depicts the effects of climate change on the planet through various different points of view through interconnected series. So starts okay. in 20, 2037, then there's an episode of 2046, 2047, 2059. Okay. Um it's, it's kind of interesting. It is, and it is horrible. Um, wow. I know. Here's the thing: the the cast is great. David Diggs is in this first episode. Kit Harrington, oh, uh, sure. Matthew Matthew Reese, Heather Graham, um, fucking Meryl Streep is in the second hour episode. Oh my god! What what is this on? This Apple. is on Apple Plus. Oh, okay. I was gonna say like, so, who has this money to, to like, drop this on something? Drop this, on people. Sh- this self-serious yeah. and boring sounding Apple so Plus. The, yeah. The first episode is a is it's basically so Ken Harrington plays this billionaire who's trying to to make a uh, with his 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 major domo is Matthew Reese playing a complete scum fuck billionaire enabler, <laughs> um, trying to make a casino in the Arctic, and he he flat out says at some point he's like, look. Uh, I'm going to be dead by the time the planet burns, so I'd rather enjoy myself while I'm here. Like, wow. these people are fucking awful. Meanwhile, yeah. there's, um, David Diggs is a rabbi who has quit being a doctor so he can be a climate activist. And there's someone else who's a climate activist who's, who are, his, his wife is, is flying out of a, a fire, and so he has to leave this climate summit. And 
the whole thing is about like we're about to hit two degrees. The world's getting everything's either on fire or flooding. Yeah. The all the climate change stuff is coming true. And are we gonna take and are we gonna take it back? Are the climate is the is the, the climate activists? And the answer is fucking no. Like, no, nothing's gonna happen. And I'm like, you know what? This is probably accurate, but right. I don't want to watch this. Well, that's the point. Why would of... I want to watch the world burn like this year? Who do you, who is this for? Because the people who who buy this, the people who buy into climate change aren't we already we're already convinced. Well, I think that was the point that climate change people make is that we have to prevent getting to two because when we get to two like two degrees it is like or whatever yes. the barrier is. But you can't you cannot do it by scaring people. We've learned this by yeah. now. You cannot you cannot fear people into into doing this. And this is all dire fear mongering shit. And it's not there's nothing interesting about it to me i'm like this all this is all very accurately research like i have no doubt that he has done the math and he's done the research the second episode is called whale fall and is about the death of the whales i'm like yes okay that is probably going to happen where's your fucking story last week tonight was the only one that like they made a pitch for do you know how much money there is in re reinventing clean energy how much jobs it creates like, a whole new yeah. economy that made an economic I, argument for it rather than right, a and, fucking and I think, moral one and that's the thing i think this thing is it's it's hard is in the right place, but like if you already believe in climate change, watching this is just like it, all it's going to do is crank your anxiety up for no payoff. And the performances are impressive, but it's like it is everything is 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 shot through this like burnt sienna filter. Why is Apple TV so fucking committed to be a bummer? Yeah, well, that's Apple has several speeds, and this is one of their speeds. Bummer. It is prestige bummer. You tell me like a sci-fi anthology about climate change. Like if you're going to show me uh, some possible solutions they come up with. OK, but no, it's just things getting worse every 10 years. Right. I, I can barely tolerate John Oliver giving me the fucking yeah. fix. Right. Like what this has going for it. It has a fucking fantastic cast. It includes in our various episodes, Edward Norton, Diane Lane, Gemma Chan, Carrie Russell, Marion Cotillard, Forrest Whitaker, Toby Maguire. Dude, are you reading this cast or is that season two of Poker Face? Because that right, sounds, that like, sounds fucking... like Poker Face. <laughs> uh, Cherry Jones, speaking of Poker Face. Yeah. Uh, Judd Hirsch, Nick Kroll, uh, David Schwimmer. Like it, it is a it is a, it's a huge ton of people in this. Uh, it's it's clearly expensive. I don't know who this is for. I I don't know why you make this show. Yeah, it's not changed anyone's mind. It's not. Yeah. And it's not it's not entertaining. Like if it's gonna if it's gonna tell if it's gonna have a point. That's great, but you, you it, this is not a documentary. This is a sci-fi anthology. At least Chernobyl teaches you about history and how not to repeat it, sort of. Right, right, yeah. I uh, I found this just thoroughly unpleasant and just like a t huge waste of money. Uh, it was it was really disappointing. I also watched on the complete end of the other end of the spectrum. Uh, Top Chef International started up, and uh, it's the first time they pitched. I don't know if you guys know this. Top Chef is so popular; it's now twenty years old. It's the twentieth anniversary. Jesus. That there are, there are top chefs in like every country. There's a top chef Brazil. There's a top chef uh, Paris. There's a top chef Mexico, and all of these various top chefs with the various have, have have various top chefs. This is the international. So they're bringing in top chefs who have won or or placed in other countries, and they're all facing off against each other in this in this year's sort of all star top chef. Top Chef Russia, a lot of potato base. <laughs> and so it's super fun. There it's all it's being shot in London. And they have uh, you know, people from Mexico and Brazil. And um I'm trying oh, there's a there's a woman, there is a woman from Poland who is very upset that the challenge the second second episode challenge was rice. She's like, I'm from Poland, we cook with potatoes. What the fuck is this rice shit? <laughs> Uh, so this is this is really fun. I always love the All Star seasons of Top Chef, and so far it's been really fun. I'm glad that's on Peacock because it used to be you had to watch it on on Bravo with somebody's stolen cable login and watch ads for every other Bravo reality show, and and it was it was awful. It was a slog. <laughs> uh, watching on Peacock with no ads is, is the point way to watch. This it. is potato souffle. Please don't eat all of it. I need to take it back to family. <laughs> they will starve. Uh, watch the last two episodes of uh, Watch Grand Crew, which is again. Off and on for me it hasn't quite hit its stride yet. Uh, watched Not Dead yet, season uh, episode seven, which uh, one of her sticking her, with it. Yeah, I'm really liking it. And cool. uh, her her dad's favorite baseball announcer dies, and so she's like following her around when her dad comes to visit. It was is a fun it's a fun episode. 
I watched the uh, latest episode of Bad Batch, which is really good. And I watched the latest episode of Quantum Leap, which takes him into the 1950s in a mental asylum. Man, and this one was great. What a great. I mean, they have such a way of putting him in jeopardy that is is like, I'm like, oh, yeah, Madison's there and she can tell or Addison's there. She can tell him everything, but she can't do she anything can't, like, yeah, she can't touch him. Yeah. And the uh, the, so the this one, with, like this one, both does a, yeah, this one both does a cool. 1950s uh shutter island horror yep. thing which is which yep. actually works and is creepy mm -hmm. yep but then also adds to the quantum leap lore in a way that they'd never done yeah and in a yeah. way that the original show didn't do yeah but they reference the original show they yes, reference I, the evil leapers but i love that they they give like they give an explanation to the evil leaper that actually makes me so much happier than like the original show i it was the era it was on it was not yeah. shows didn't yeah, do yeah. this yeah but the original show was very much like, I don't know, I guess the Benevolent God runs the Quantum Leap program. And there's also like uh, the devil running evil. There's leapers. a devil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like what I'm pretty sure we're doing here. The idea yeah. of who the mole like, so spoilers for Quantum Leap. If you're not caught up, you should pause here. <laughs> but the the idea that there's a mole. And it's Ziggy. Yeah. I fucking love that. Yeah, I love the idea that as soon as you turn on a quantum computer with a time travel program, mm -hmm. there's another quantum computer in another timeline running game against itself yep. for primacy. Like you've made Kangs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and I, I just love that, like their realization of like, so the evil leaper has a Ziggy. Yep. So both Ziggies might be the same Ziggy. It's a quantum computer. Yeah. And, and like, because they realize that like, it's not as simple as, He's trying to undo what Ben's doing. No. Ben has a few, like what Ben's trying to do is actually disrupt Ziggy's program or Ziggy's plan. Right. Technically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or disrupt something to keep Addison yeah, alive. The, this was, uh, yeah, I don't, it, it's, it's fascinating. I love what they did with, uh, with Janice in this episode. Yep. I love what they're doing with, with, is it Ramirez? Is that, is that the uh, uh, Martinez? Martinez. Yeah, the evil leaper. I, I, I like him as the as leaper X. Yeah, it was brutal. Uh, I saw it coming, too. Like, Ben is such a... Ben is very good at adapting situations, that kind of thing. But unlike Addison, who was supposed to be the leaper, mm -hmm. he is not a he is not an operative. Because Addison... I'm, I'm surprised Addison didn't see that coming. Right. She was so happy that they were succeeding, she wasn't thinking. Because, really, he should have seen... Anyone who had any kind of training should have seen... Mission's over. He doesn't need you anymore. You are no longer allies. Yeah, I, I honestly was wondering how exactly he was going to throw Ben down the thing. I just did not expect yeah. him to just stab him in the fucking neck. It was worse. Yeah, it was actually worse. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm enjoying the crap out of this first season. Uh, really can't wait to see where it wraps up. I'm gonna be so sad when there's a gap. I hope they I hope they have a season two. Do they? Oh, they do. They've already okay. renewed. Yeah, I thought, you'd, so. I thought you'd said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're already renewed. So that's that's great. Yeah, and then I watched um, most of this week's Last Week Tonight and uh, watched this week's Mandalorian, which uh, Nick is behind, so we're going to skip that for dessert this time. We'll catch up to it next time. Yeah. All right. Uh, just a reminder, you can support us by going over to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. Throw us a buck an episode. In exchange, we get to keep all our streaming services, pay for our hosting costs, and you get bonus content each week. This week, our Guy Ritchie Marathon reaches its uh, penultimate episode. Penultimate. As we, con we continue with his lesser-known crime stories, Revolver and Rock and Rolla. The R's. Let's jump to our main course, brought to you by Max, our benevolent dictator. The benevolent dictator of TV dudes. And uh, let's talk about Physical 100, which, y'all, I, uh, like I said, my friend Elizabeth said, she was like, hey, this is a thing you'll like if you like this kind of thing. And I didn't think I would. And then y'all said you had watched some of it after Max suggested it, and you're like, you should watch this. Is this a you should watch this in the same way that... Uh, that Joe once got me to watch that Tracy Ullman show no, and then punked me. No, I can tell. Uh, like since I don't know, I, I assume like I was shocked that I threw it on grudgingly. Like, yeah. well, fuck it. Let's. I, I we got other stuff going on. I'm gonna throw on this next week's. Uh, it was actually supposed to be for the next week's. Uh, yeah. Patreon request, and uh, I was like, all right, I, I'll just go ahead and throw one on. And we got to the end of the first episode, and and I was like, son of a bitch, they structured this really well, and now I. I have to start the second one because I have to see which of these guys did this. And and so I start like, so I started, so we watched the second one and like, by the end of the second one, I'm like, well, now I actually want to see like Soon Han's team. God damn it. 
And so like we got it, but then I was like, but Randy watches Top Chef and shit. Where like, I mean, I yes, I eat food to survive, but I don't yeah, give a shit is, about watching people compete on it. Randy, this is yeah. the Top Chef, but good. So, like, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. I was like, well, Randy at least watches competitive shows, and and the thing that surprised me about this one is, uh, for same as like Hyperdrive, like the yes. way it's structured is is really tight. They introduce people as they become important, and not uh, it, yeah, all not at once. not all at once, but also the and I, I'm going to chalk this up to the Koreanness of it the the tone of it is bizarre they all have yes. this weird respect for each other and are so excited to be there and it's Man, so weird y'all y'all watched a different show than i did because what i saw was anime american gladiators and not as good as american gladiators i fucking hated this <laughs> well, uh, they spent they spend most of the first episode introducing us to 100 people mm -hmm, and yeah. every single one of these fucking meatheads comes into this place that has statues of their own bodies and is like, hello, hello. Oh, look at the size of that guy's forearm. Hello, hello. I didn't need 45 minutes of hello, hello. Oh, he does CrossFit. See, I oh, thought he's it was a, interesting he's a bodybuilder. The people there, because I didn't know what the challenges were. I'm like, wait, there's a lot of different fucking body types in here. Yeah. That one's a cheerleader. Yeah, the hey, first you know time what? that somebody smaller walked in and on, like, as the challenges go on, like, we just watched uh, in one of the bigger challenges. Like they put a team together literally of of like the dregs, like everybody who's been like eliminated a bunch of people who've been eliminated so far. And one of the other teams flat out talks shit like not shit about him, but like, no, like one of their guys is injured, they're all smaller than us, and they are. And so much of the competition is they yeah, they have to be in crazy good shape, but the stuff they're moving or the thing they're doing is just outside what anyone could lift. And they've given it to a group of people who are always gonna go, but I could lift it. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing maybe maybe it's because i got beat up by jocks in high school maybe it's because i just don't like meatheads but this fucking credits give me body dysmorphia i did not like this well, show well uh again i have what you call a podcaster's body uh the <laughs> the it gets down to where uh i mean the hanging challenge is just to see who has yeah, the squid like, game opener basically is like yes. just to, like eliminate some people right away. And I like that they show like uh, the military dude did well. And then the rescue guy fell asleep for a minute. There's like. a there's a dude that like he literally he falls asleep in the hanging thing. And uh, and like when they when they check in, like like, OK, out of the hundred people or whatever they introduced, who the fuck was that guy? And he's like. Yeah, I appreciate that everybody else here goes to the gym a lot, but I, I do ice mountain rescue for a living. Yeah, and, and so I don't go to the gym. He's like, I've never been to a all gym. these muscles are from climbing yeah. and saving. And people. so, like, he's just literally like, I need to hang off this thing. Yeah, y'all, well, I watch twenty minutes of people hanging, <laughs> just hanging onto things, hanging onto stuff in case you fall in the water. I don't know what show you watch. So you didn't this is watch not the, the ball show game where they they were fighting over a ball. Fuck no. I watched the part of the second episode so I could see which one of the two meatheads didn't, didn't fall in fall. the water first. <laughs> yeah. And once I knew, I turned off the show never to watch again. The, yeah. They construct a ball challenge to where they can challenge. They, the, the way they challenge to put these people against each other is devious and works every time. They, the 50 they that keep fucking with these people. The bottom really 50 cool. of that hanging challenge go down on a thing, and then the top 50 go up on a platform that's like f 10 feet higher than them. Like it immediately starts pulling sight games. Uh, it's like, oh, those fucking top 50 people, what do they think they're so better up there? And then the, the top 50 people are like, oh, but look it, at those fucking losers. The thing that keeps cracking me up is like, these are all people who are either Olympic athletes or in, like they're, they're all top in a yeah. thing. And, and then the, it looked like a, when they do strongest man in the world or whatever, and it's like, okay, cool, but just throw that log real far. How far do you drag a truck? Like that's yeah. there's like they get to the second challenge. It's like, okay, cool, just keep this ball away from the other dude. <laughs> like I can do that. No, you fucking oh, can't. You'd be surprised. <laughs> and everyone has different strategies on it. The so one of the MMA fighters destroys one of the bodybuilders because even though he's way smaller, he knows the submission hold. Like he's like he's just a better wrestler, and like yeah. all of the other people who have any wrestling training that are watching are like, nope, you're nope. done, man. You yeah, can't, you can't you escape can't. that hold. I get this in theory, but I I couldn't even get into it. And here's the thing, I I'll watch an American Ninja Glad Ninja Warrior run. I watched American Gladiators in college. I can enjoy a physical com com complex show. I thought this was so fucking weird. The team structure of it in the later challenges really makes Hong Sun 
is the uh, one they all were. He's like a celebrity there in Korea. Gray haired, 50 year old uh, MMA fighter, 50 something year old MMA fighter. And they all like, if they really respect, like, it's like their hero. It'd be like, you know. And he is honestly, he's the best team leader. Like, he seems like an actual the class second, act. The, the ball challenge, actually, one of the MMA fighters challenges him. And instead of doing the ball thing, he's like, here's, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to drop this ball. Let's just fight. Because he's also an MMA There's fighter. There's an honor he's, duel in the middle of this fucking chat. Like, it's he's crazy. Like, when else would I ever get to do this? this and he's guy's so excited. Hero. He's like, I, all I want to do is get punched in the face by my hero. Right. And he does. <laughs> yeah. he, his hero beats the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the challenges later are... Well, open hand slaps the shit out of him. There's uh, moving sandbags across a bridge, like a tower bridge, like a Legend of the Hen Temple type thing. There's move, There's dragging a boat. <laughs> uh, and all those challenges, they require physical things, but the what wins them for every team is thinking it through how to do it the most efficiently. The Hong Sun... Uh, during the rope bridge, they have to construct the bridge, right? And tape underneath. So it'll get, uh, the more you run across it, the more unstable it'll get and you'll lose planks. And when you lose planks, you can't go, go back get and em. get them. So what he does, which is no one else does because it makes you look ridiculous. And this is, these are a bunch of meatheads and are very egotistical. He gets down on his hands and knees and crawls like a baby. And he even says it. He's like crawling like a baby is not a great look, but it w- he's like, I'm going, I mean, he like basically slides to the middle of the bridge. But like he lowers he's going his crazy of fast. gravity yeah. and he puts one less uh, person that's putting stress on the thing. And they show how well they do, how much sand they stack. They fucking crush the other team. Yeah, there's nothing. And it's all here. because that guy decided to go on his knees. I know. I, I usually don't get into any reality things. I'm always surprised when one is put together. Like, okay, that's just right for me. Cool. And I, I, I get excited anytime anyone figures stuff out. Like the first Hung Sun's first team kills this the the ship challenge too. Because mm-hmm. they're the only ones that they're the only team that realize lift the boat and then push. Everyone else tries to physically just overpower and it push a, it. It is a ton and a half boat. And like there's no there's no group of these meatheads that can move it. But also there's ten of them working on it, so they all think they can just shove this fucking thing the baseball player uh they have to break open a box to get one of the barrels <laughs> and he's like well i don't have to break the whole box i have to break the hinges off because then the bo- then the uh door will come off and he's so the he, only one that does it he, hits, he does it it does it in two st- like three strikes yeah like, and he's done like he just starts mowing through these boxes they've got to break things out of boxes and he's the only he's like yeah man work smarter I mean, not the harder physical, the <laughs> physical stuff is impressive too because these people are beasts and they do stuff that you just think is physically impossible but what i really like is when people figure shit out and do how, how to do i think i think for me this because a lot of this sounds like survivor and, yeah. and yeah. that kind of stuff like i think this needed to be physical 20 when they kept bringing more people <laughs> on I was like, this is this is like a clown car reality show. I no, and the hundred people's insane. Yeah, it's they also when they, they drop to fifty after the hanging challenge. But... No, they immediately uh, eliminate half, and then they immediately eliminate half again. Yeah, yeah, they get down to twenty five okay. by the end of episode but, but, two. Man, they need to be there way before that because I was gone by the end of episode one. I, I really think you. But would I think might... you're also surprised by some. Like, I, I'm not sure they would have picked. I, you know, you would have still ended up with some people in there. There's going to be a relative top and bottom no matter what. But if out of the hundred, there were some people went immediately where I was like, "Oh, damn!" <laughs> if you liked, if you liked hyperdrive, I feel like Randy, you might actually like this if you give it another episode and get to the t- challenges and the mental stuff of it. Maybe I liked hyperdrive enough. I don't know that I loved. But it. then again, you've—I don't think I've ever suggested going back for something for you and you liking it, or you actually <laughs> going back and watching it. Never mind. <laughs> I should say there's, that's more correct. There is, there is almost no way I'm going back to watch any more of this. But me and Les are definitely going to finish this out. Yeah, I'm finishing this out and tonight. All right. I'm going to say thank you, Max, for the. I really. I, is... I have. To, yeah. It's so. Oh, it's. So, I realize Max is also responsible for a lot of the Patreon requests. So this, this is a backhanded be, compliment, but. This is going to be high. If this finishes strong, it's going to be on a high on my list of the year. Honestly. I, this is one of the most enjoyable things I've watched in a while. I, I, I really thought you'd enjoy it more just liking competition shows more than me. No, just the, just the structure not. of it being solid. Yeah. Uh, I did not like this. The. I mean, I thought introducing them all at one. I mean, I guess they all contractually they have if they're going to be on the show, they need screen time. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. why are they on there? So you yeah. have to introduce like even if they're going to get eliminated immediately, they want their names on there, and they show that every time they show their name, they show what their occupation is or what they're known for, mm-hmm. and they're almost all like there's a couple repeats with MMA fighters and but a lot like there's a lot of people that professional dancer the professional dancer is yeah. still in it. Yeah, the he's still in it. Yeah, I think the cheerleader is still in it. it. 
couple of the wrestlers, a uh, bunch of the MMA fighters and a bunch of the military. Because the challenge is you don't know if like when you're picking teams, you don't know who's going to be like when you're if you're the, they don't know what the challenge is before they pick teams. So it's like, do I need someone fast? Do I need someone strong? Uh, There's one time where like somebody literally gets to pick their like one on one opponent and they pointedly pick a big dude, the 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 person who looks to be the worst at what they're about to do. Yeah. And the dude is so fast. Like the big guy is he's, so fast. It's scary. He's shockingly fast. Like it, everyone, everyone, in, even in it, the it, people were like, whoa, how yeah, is he moving like, that fast? It, it really like you just don't expect this guy to have to be this sprightly. And and he's a, built like a tank. And, yeah. Uh, and it, it, like he just absolutely wails. And, and afterwards, the guy's like, I feel doubly bad having lost because I specifically picked him. And he was one of the first to pick. Like he was, he had the first pick. Of like he's, he's ah, like, I, I kind of big slow motherfucker. He's like, I kind of arrogantly went at him, and he just kind of wailed me. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have to destroy their own bus, or oh, they get man. dropped off a bridge when they. It's oh, really man. It, the, yeah. the show is sometimes needlessly cruel about the like, first time that one of them walks in the room and realizes like when they get eliminated they have to take a hammer and go knock their like break their bust and he's like, say, like this seems weirdly cruel like specifically hey, psychologically your ain't shit. <laughs> I think I I go think home, I picked up a, shit. I picked up on that too, and I think I didn't like that either. I, I, told Nick, is, I was like, is, I don't yeah. envy their managers who have to, or like their trainers who have to oh, put these some people of these together. People are going to be broken for these the next are, year. Yeah. Some yeah. of these folks, like like the military folks, like there's there's some of them in there that you can tell have have some mental fortitude and some have been through some adversity and stuff. Yeah. And then there's some of these like bodybuilding influencers and shit that YouTube I'm like, guys that this never is had a bad day. One, one, of them, yeah. one of them yeah. straight up cried. And he yeah, broke one guy just laid there for a while and then like, oh man, I think you broke him. <laughs> because this is their thing. This is their their thing is this. They're all wrapped up in their body, and then it, you're even, gonna fuck even them me on that. We're talking about we like the people that are left because they, uh, honestly, the douchebags got eliminated early. It was yeah, really interesting. B ball cup and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there the during the one on one challenge, there's a couple of times where some of these guys are are just huge. I mean, it's like it's like Terry Crews, and yeah. and they're in this wrestling, thing, and like a guy will just straight push them, and they'll come off their feet. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like and you, yeah, it'll yeah. cut to the testimony of like. I've never been picked up and thrown in the air before. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't know, know what that, that was, was like. Po- yeah, I didn't know that was possible to do to me. Uh, yeah. it, it shows like so, sometimes it shows like that you think they might get actually hurt because like oh my god, <laughs> are you feel- here? I heard a guy hit the fucking uh, tunnel thing that yeah. like one of the one of the playground features that they're running around. You hear this guy hit this thing. Like he just gets thrown into it, but then and, every once in a while, a guy that's smaller will will flip a bigger dude, and it's super cool. Like, yeah, one of them's holding onto a ball like it's they the, get the basketball, right and you're you're on you know like it's recess or something, and this smaller dude just grabs the ball and picks him up. Yeah, uh, of course. Also, one guy you're supposed to only be able to hold this ball with both hands. You can't. It's just big enough. You can't defend and hold yeah. it at once. One this guy, guy just. Like if what? you took a medicine ball at the gym and grabbed it with one hand and just snatched a handful of it. of it. Yeah. Like I, I was like, Nick, that if, if I'm on a basketball court and a guy just like, just, like if I see the orange basketball come out between his knuckles, cause he's just grabbed it like fabric. Like the grip is just, like, yeah. That's what this yeah. looked like. He just, yeah, is, it was, and he's just holding it up in the air. Oh, like, okay. Okay. You are fucking terrifying. <laughs> like the, man. No other person did that. Cause I'm pretty sure. Sh- like, cause I thought before he did it, that was impossible. No, I, like, <laughs> I would have sworn you couldn't do that to that ball. It's like he, he picks it up. Like it's a disappointing puppy for him. Like. <laughs> it's like by the scruff of its neck. It's really fucked up. Uh, anyway, I, uh, all right. I, 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 I'm glad at least two of the three of us, it puts it. Yes. Leaps ahead of all the anime we've watched. Thank you. Our benevolent dictator. Ponies go to sleep when I got you next to me. Les, did you want to talk about Shadow and Bunny or want to wait for that for later weeks? Uh, we, we can wait till that? later weeks. Yeah, let's yeah, push, let's that. push that. Okay. Because I, I am going to watch the rest of it. It is, I will say, Randy, it is, I forgot how complicated. Yes. Uh, like yeah. how big you a world. You need to catch up on the, even yeah. rewatching, the terminolo- e- yeah. terminology. Even rewatching the previously on season one was not yeah. enough. I, I I wish I had more recently watched But then Jasper one. has a gunfight in season two and I'm and like, I'm, I'm, back. I'm, I'm back in, baby. Yeah, yeah After, the gunfight almost got me back in. Yeah. It, took, it took through the second episode for everything to click of like, I remember who everybody is and, and where we are and what's going on. Cool. 
But if there was less, if there was less TV on right now, I would be more inclined to go go through it because I remember how much I enjoyed the first season. Yeah, and I will probably watch it before the year is out, but I don't know that I would watch it right now. All right, dessert time for dessert. Oh, dessert, baby. Talk, oh, right. It's time to yes. talk Ted Lasso. Yes, 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 yes. Season three, episode two of what I presume is a 13 episode season. Do we even know? I don't even know. I don't, I don't want to look. I'm scared to look. I'm scared to look. I, I, yeah. I, I, I try to not look until I, I think we're if halfway If I don't through. look, it might be endless. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> like, I, <laughs> so I, uh, I try not to get too much input from other TV critics before I've started forming my opinions of stuff. But I did see the early buzz on Ted Lasso season three. And it seemed to be people were sort of disappointed. They were like, it feels about too much time going for people on. to be disappointed. Sure. Well, honestly, that first episode back wasn't as good as the other season openers. Like, But it was uh, still great. But no, it was <laughs> still great. It's just not as good as some of their other episodes have been. Yeah. Because uh, we, we are now spoiled for like the Christmas episode, the fucking yeah. funeral episode. Like, But it was is... also time in the cycle for like, yeah. I mean, there's only people so much hay you can things. make out of, hey, this show's yeah. great. Now it's that show that was great, but is it bad? I mean, it's yeah, kind of like how any Marvel movie that comes out, like, like, Every yeah. critic seems to like is Marvel fatigue a thing? I don't know. Was it a fatigue a thing five years ago when we started talking about this? Besides, <laughs> yeah. how else are we going to do an article in five years about the best season of television you didn't watch? Right. I have Marvel fatigue. Fatigue is what I have. I'm tired <laughs> exactly. of people's Marvel fatigue. Yes. Uh, this. So, but Ted Lasso is remains as always fucking great. Oh my this god! Was a, this, episode this was a great episode. So the, good. Oh man! So every so everybody being concerned for Keely and Roy, like everyone. Yes. Oh man, it is amazing. Yeah. Except, except for Roy, who wants to stop fucking talking okay. about it. But then Roy's growth about Chelsea and like that realization was mm-hmm. amazing. But then yeah. the clincher of it all, fully matured Jamie is the greatest thing I've ever seen on television. And the episode right? starts with that. Like, oh my god, when he does not follow Keely and, and the, turns, the show, yep. the show knows what it's doing. The yes. show knows yeah. what it's doing. Goes, and I fell like, for it. I full. I, I didn't even realize I was falling and he for turns it. Turns right, and I was like. <gasps> Yeah. yeah, we but all then, thought he was going after Keely, yes. of course. Jamie's actual sympathy face looks so douchey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I love that. Real, I know, realizing so. he's sincere, he just can't not look like this. The, the best yeah. version of Jamie is still Jamie, which is yeah. not like, he's yeah. just... And I, and I love that that kid's still in there. That's the thing. They didn't do the thing where um, there's a... This is a very weird reference to make. You guys seen My Blue Heaven? Yep. Okay. I know what a vegetable... The, yeah, I know what arugula is. You know the bit where um, Rick Moranis is basically his getting his confidence stuff, but basically all he's doing is turning into Steve Martin's character, yeah. losing himself. Yeah, they didn't do that with Jamie. Jamie no. is not becoming Ted; he is just becoming a Tedified version of himself. He's becoming the best version of yeah. himself. Yeah, and but he's still so clearly the same. And, and you're right, Randy. They do that a lot in other shows where how they mature a character is just well, let's completely change them and it's how they how, how they're yeah. written. And Jamie is the same person. Yeah, but he yet didn't get somehow, smarter. <laughs> yeah no he didn't get any smarter but he's on a different he's on a, in a different stage of his life yeah yeah and that's but, what i'm hoping the za the zaz thing is I, the, and, yeah so yeah. the reason that i don't think that this show's lost any steps is because it continues to surprise me by giving mm-hmm. me fun to watch good television entertaining good jokes examples of how to actually deal with other adults and, and deal with conflict the oh, way man. that the, the way that he pulls Roy, Roy aside, the way that Roy pulls Trin aside, the way yeah. that Keely pulls uh, yep. her fucking Our, uh, Barbara. CFO yeah. aside, yeah. Barbara's side, like all of it is it done. It resists the temptation for people to yell a big argument in the middle of a public space, right? Or or, or, or to, to just be person- shitty about it and, and endlessly mm-hmm. hurt. Right, or to paint one person as the bad guy. Right, like right. When Keely goes to talk to Barbara, Barbara's just been an utter shit to her friend. Although there is a bad guy in the show. Fuck Rupert forever. Rupert, no, can, fuck Rupert, Rupert can die. Fuck Rupert. Die in a fire. Well, Rupert, Rupert, as he walks away, has a little trench coat going. He's got a like. He's got a Darth no, Vader. I was saying, so look at this Highlander it. looking motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yes, Rupert's the actual bad guy. But um, Barbara, when she goes in to talk to her, Barbara was a complete dick to her friend, but also yeah. she's not wrong about her friend. Like her friend no. is not qualified for this and, job. And also And Keely splits that difference of like yeah. you cannot I you are correct. Yeah. And if she doesn't work out, you and I together can hire someone else. But you cannot but you cannot talk you to people, talk like, to people that. like that. And and Barbara realizing that like, wow, I've become really callous because I just get bumped from place to place and I don't feel like anyone knows me as a person. Yep. She's and the fact consultant. that Keely that Keely in that it's it's such a very Ted Lasso thing that Keely immediately spots the snow globes. She stops in the middle of her righteous indignation and it's like yeah. that's an interesting thing about you. It's the be curious, not judgmental. That's thing. actually distractingly charming of you. That's yeah. that's actually an uh, an amount of snow globes that has made me forget my anger for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the same it's the same reason 
that Ted was able to get through to Rebecca, that he was able mm-hmm. to get through to Jamie, that he's able to get through to everybody to get through to Tread Krim because he does the curious, not judgmental thing. And then as a result, they're like, someone's taking the time to see me. I should return that favor. Yes. And that's all it takes. That that little bit of kindness that's really hard to do when you're pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> Ted Lasso is the ultimate boil boil down is the ultimate lesson you try and teach your kids of the golden rule treat people how you would like to be treated yeah and yeah i was even i I was excited to see uh uh that even uh ted could talk to roy and really he he's Mm -hmm. ted still he's nice but he but lays down like, the law with him of like, like yeah, hey, he's like, man, he's I don't like, know what is this. going on with you yeah. two, but but it needs to be fixed right now. I need you to quash it, like right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, and this like he is very serious. I mean, we've seen him get mad. We saw him get mad at Jamie over practice before. Mm-hmm. This is different. This is a thing where he's just like he's being. He's like Roy, you're not being the adult in the room. Yeah, and I know you're better than this. Go fix this. Yeah, and Roy has a reason to be pissed. The fact that he's carrying around a review oh, Trent I mean, in his wallet. And that Trent like just owns it. I'm sorry. Years ago. Yeah. I yeah. thought I was being edgy and I was just looking for the worst in people. Yep. And yep. being mean. I, I got to tell you, seeing Roy and Trent and Ted at the end of the episode together in a room, I'm like, I want more scenes with the three of these guys. Oh, man. Yeah. Add Trent <laughs> to the Diamond Dogs. You know what's happening. Yeah. I don't want to read that book he's going to write. Also, yeah, great right? move of Trent. Like, how are we going to bring? We got to bring Trent back, right? He's too writing a book about the so, club. Well, he's writing a book about the team. That's such a clever uh, thing. I was even excited to see the hooligans back. Like, oh, the hooligans. man. Yes. I was like, oh, yes. man. Take those fucking hats off. They're cursed. Look at these motherfuckers. We're bad luck. <laughs> oh, and then, of course, we got to talk about Rebecca, Rebecca. Pulling the move. Fucking sour yelling. Hail, Hail Mary oh, passing. Oh, of yes. Like, yeah, when she sour yells that know, guy. She knows the move. She knows what Rupert is doing. So she can't do that. Oh, that but what was she a, can do. And that was a beautiful conversation about like, I I know that Rupert. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was so good. It makes it Rupert even reveal. more of a piece of shit. Yeah. 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 I does. know exactly what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I love that. I love Rebecca. Rebecca is not, it's not a move for her. She's just pissed. So she just goes and yells at him. Yeah. I, I think it was, uh, I think it was half and half of like her being mad, but also I think yeah. she knew that her only, like it might, it was probably it has a low chance of working, but it's the only yeah. chance she's got of, if I make this about his ego, yeah, like you won't and know you're the best. Like, you won't know you won because if you were if you play for Richmond, you will know you won because yeah, you're everybody the best. yes man's yeah. this guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's also by the way, credit to the Foley people because when she's yelling at him, the stream stops for a second, yeah. right? <laughs> also, and you eat far too, too much, much asparagus. asparagus. And his it, the scene ends with him going, <laughs> "Little sniff, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah that's right. And yeah, yeah. making it about his ego was definitely the and so like we should definitely coin the term sour yelling because sour like, yelling. I was like, yes. shit, that is exactly also, what she just uh, did. Yeah, the office. Well, she should move to Scranton, Pennsylvania. No, the British office. Oh, that's right, y'all did a pre-make. A pre-make. How has no one ever said that? How is that the first time I've heard that term? Right. That's yeah. That's I mean, so good. That is, that is one of the great things about the show and about Bill Bill Lawrence and the and and Goldstein and the rest of the writers in this writers room. Mm-hmm. The you forget that these are people being written sometimes. I mean, it is a very written show, but because they've made Ted such like Ted has a quip and a, and a pop culture reference and a, and a rhyme at all times, but that's all in the writing. And so mm-hmm. the bit of that probably took them a week to come up with the pre make joke. And someone was like, "That's going in." Someone well, that's and, going in. And also the the moment in the show, like after he did, like, "Hey, you got to squash this between." you and, and yep. trent and then like okay what's a hallmark movie <laughs> yes like, oh okay. man perfect well, those are and they're sometimes terrible but they're also great but it's most terrible, 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 but they're really great. great you know they're good with the sound off they're good with the sound <laughs> off yeah yeah sometimes she's also santa claus oh, and maybe a beard princess. yelping throughout the entire episode oh god oh, yeah beards yell yeah uh ted almost ted almost passing out when they heard about like, oh, really. man Oh, sorry, I almost blacked out for like. <laughs> well, then what are we all talking about? Also, Roy having the res—he loves having the respect of his team because the minute he yes. tells them, no one talked to the Saudi. Prick. Oh, he looks happy every time yeah. they all, shut yes. up. Yeah. Like anyone, they they, I think he threatens them with a head. Like I will put my skull through the back of your skull, and everyone yeah. like yeah. looks at Trent like, no, no, that's not. He's not hyperbole. I he will he will kill me. But my favorite reaction. Talk. My favorite reaction was Jamie. Was was like, uh, not nope. Jamie. Was a uh, nope, was nope. Danny. Yeah, Danny's. I, uh, Danny gives him the, the look and they're like, they look at him. He's like, fuck off, Trent. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Jamie's face scored. <laughs> no, Not Danny's Jamie. I'm sorry. Face. Danny's Danny's face. Danny's scored. face scored. Also, I, I love when they do the 11, 11 wish. 
Yes. And then and then they come out and immediately like, we're gonna get whatever his name Zaz. is. Zaz. Zava. 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 Like because I just wish for that 30 seconds ago. <laughs> yes. Yep. It's like, oh, that's so good. Wait, are you said about yeah. Trent? Like Trent's writing a book about like what if you're not a set? Like, stop yelling no. out shit. Why would Zava write a book about <laughs> Trent? <laughs> Trent Crim. No. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that who's on first out so quick. Yes. God damn it, I love yeah. this show. Yeah, it's so good. And every every single moment, there's so much in this. I mean, I'm sorry. It's fallen off. It's lost a step. I can't believe. <laughs> right. It's so <clears throat> terrible now. Um, every single, there's so many characters to service and they're doing a really good job. There was yeah. no Nate this episode. I didn't miss Nate. No. no well, they just, Rupert they, is, the, is the villain in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I feel like it's telling that like Nate's appearance in this episode is literally just a thing by which Rupert can fuck with Richmond. Yeah. By which I mean, Rebecca. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. oh, we're yeah. so lucky to have a coach like Nate on staff. Yeah, you know, really I don't know knows. where he used to work, but God, they're lost, you know. Yeah. Well, and then <laughs> also she's like, he mentioned double dig. He's like, he really knows the game, which yeah. is a dig at Ted. I'm like, yeah. also, um, I really loved. Um, I don't know. I've lost what I was going to say. <laughs> so, I was going to say there's a, there's something there's 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 a lot about this episode that I really really loved. I was I always thought Richmond was your one true love, and he was like, well, oh, I guess man. you know, as you get older, you. uh you, you, know, you get used to you get, you get tired of the same, old, tired same, of the same old, old thing and i was like yeah. you pe-. i was like i was like if, they, if i was there they'd out, have to hold just, me back i'm right. like mother i'm gonna slap well, taste you, out of your mouth she's she's going with the kill him with kindness thing that her mother gave her and, well, and that ted is keeps wearing on her oh yeah um the uh i loved i love when rebecca talks with trent crim and he's like he he spots him immediately he's like are you really going to go after this guy because your ex-husband wants him and they're all talking and she's like yeah, and he's yeah. like, love that. I love it, yeah. love it. Yeah, then she moves. pauses a love, moment love of like, I, <laughs> yeah, Nick and I were talking, she could bullshit, yeah. but, but fuck it. But, yeah. but Trent respects the, yeah. like, I respect that. That's, yeah, I right. respect yeah. the move. Yeah, he's like, that's a good move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i so excited to have Trent Krim as a regular on this show now. That's that's going to be great. Yes. Same. Did you all feel like, and, and I don't want, don't want to say anything negative about the show, but her mom's little cameo, as funny as it was, I'm like, what was that doing here? What is What are they setting up there? Uh, I, the minute I saw her Skyping in, I thought, uh, wow, are they going to kill Rebecca's mom uh, on top of the dad? But I thought that would be kind of a repeat and it would, it would hit differently since the dad had a different relationship with her. But then it's like the, she's doing this crazy spa thing. Yeah. And she, well, she's talking about her psychic and I'm like, there's no way they're actually going to introduce that character, right? I mean, they've got so many characters. Yeah, I don't know. Like, where no way. That, that scene doesn't serve a narrative purpose. Other, unless like, they're bringing this. Unless they're bringing the psychic. Unless in. the psychic, or they're bringing that that uh, retreat back, or maybe Rebecca goes to visit her on the retreat. Maybe right. that's an episode. Right. It just it it felt like in a in a fairly long episode. This was like a forty seven minute Keely episode. Comes to Rebecca and says, "I need a break from running the company. Well, right. my mom's on a retreat right now." Yeah, yeah, but even then, you don't what what established here that you had to establish. No, I, I don't like, know what this, that scene did. Yeah, and so I don't know what that scene's doing here, which which makes me nervous because these guys don't do that. Right. So I'm like, what are you what are you going to do with that? Are you actually going to introduce her psychic in some way? Is there a reason you're doing this? Like, I don't I don't know what well, it could going. be the banter thing all over again when when they first entered banter and we knew that was a setup for something, mm-hmm. right? But like, yeah. but they kept switching the ball on us. So like the next episode, yeah. we were like, oh, that's where it's going. Only for uh, like, no, nah, it's another thing. And speaking of banter. They haven't touched on Rebecca Sam at all. No, I I thought they were going to touch a little bit more on that as, as we get along. But I kind of like that they're they're professional about it. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I like it a lot. I'm just it's one of these things of like the confidence this show has, and this is why anyone any critic who's like it's lost a step is full of shit. This show is still just hitting every mark, and they have the confidence to do the same thing like Mike Sure does when his shows are on all cylinders. He's like, we're going to tell the story we're going to tell, and you guys are going to get on board, and we don't waste space. We don't waste time and we have character arcs for everybody. Just trust us and we will get you there. I feel like that they didn't open by killing two dogs this time. It just shows a lack of confidence that, that I think is really telling. If they were daring. Yeah. Oh, and Danny, I, I love even just the small things, but Danny saying like, oh, Zazov is here. Or, uh, Zava. 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 It, I haven't been this nervous since uh, playing for El Chapo's Little League the team. Chapo's I was like, league. wait, what? Like, oh, that got dark fast. So <laughs> casually, like, whoa, wait a minute. Danny, You do you have like a fucked up weird bat? Like, you are such a puppy dog. I just thought. life, man. Like, what was your life like? Yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. If you don't have football, will you go back to like uh, whatever you're like? Yeah, do you he'll be happy about it no matter like, what. It's... As long as he doesn't have to wear shoes that aren't <laughs> yeah. trainers. Yeah. <laughs> 
<clears throat> oh man, like we didn't talk about last episode, but the, the minute they went down the sewer, I was like, "That's ten thousand dollars worth of sneakers." Yeah, yeah, because like, yeah. yeah. like that's so it's so much it's so much expensive trainers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Party Down, which also this one is, is cruelly short. I think it's only two more episodes left. Oh no! But but every episode has been gold, and this one might be my favorite so far. Oh god, the police sting. Uh, that the they crew, do the crew. The crew does mushrooms. Well, and they and they do the. They're at a police sting. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where they're, that's the, uh, deadbeat dad gather up. Which these have really been done. Like yeah. it's usually shit like yeah. monster truck yeah. rallies or Aussie tick. I'm not joking. Yeah. No. Yeah. They no. Work, it, and it, it, yeah. It's they a thing. It works. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. So this was and, and I love that. Like there Criminals are people are we were dumb. missing out on because of the age gap because of uh Jackson's stupid fucking joke. I'm like, come on, man! I'm getting him to get on a bus that literally says this "police sting." sting. <laughs> it's a B plus at best, Johnson. Yeah, I, I loved, I loved Bobby Moynihan and all the <laughs> the cops, and and of course watching Ron try to be cool around cops. But yeah, oh yeah, the gang does mushrooms, and Roman tripping balls is yeah. so great. This is one of man. the better. It's one of the better mushroom experiences I've seen put on film, honestly. Uh, all of them. Rowan, Rowan being the only one that the cops for some reason trust. Yeah, and and wanting nothing to do with that. Yeah, the uh, I think Jennifer Garner actually steals this one as far as it's young me. So it's young me. She's she... <laughs> Saxon's like says something. Young Evie. I've lost him in the ocean. <laughs> yes. I stopped to look at a bush. He drowned. Uh, What's that mean? <laughs> yeah, the the whole thing where like she's. They're all off on their own separate little missions because Zach, Saxon's off, gonna gonna stream this. Like, and leave my psyche in twain, twain. <laughs> yep. on a live, in a stream. live stream. Well, he does. He's it's the first time he's done mushrooms, and he takes yeah. a I want to say a comedic level. Oh uh, god, a comedic, comedic yes. amount. Yes, yes. Yeah. It, like, it is a Terrence McKenna level of of psychedelics. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I don't know how much. That, uh, I don't god know how much damn it, that bag she walks your, in. I don't Jeez. know how much you should have for your first. I do know that's too much, though. Oh, man, I was—I told Nick I was like, they're all just munching on these. They should stop that. I don't think I don't think you should snack on these like they're Fritos. Like, no. no. Well, everybody's everybody's on their own little mission, and it's on a mission that makes sense to them in their mushroom adult mm-hmm. heads. Yes. So you've got you've got Evie and Henry trying to rescue uh um what's his um Saxon uh, Saxon, Saxon yeah. Who is You've also who is also watch, young her t- yelling at a random yes. person to watch the bar? Oh yes. God! Oh God! I kept waiting for that to come back a little harder than it did. <laughs> well, it doesn't um, matter because they realize that it doesn't matter how much money they make or whatever. This was a police right. thing. They're being paid to right. set up these people yeah. up. Right. Uh, Lucy reinventing food as cardboard, or vice versa. Is it food? I know. Is right? it food? I no, don't but know. Is it food? <laughs> I, I honestly, that was my favorite scene of, the, of, a, of an episode that was just joyous. The back and forth with Ron, like, no, but is, is it, it food? food? I know, right? I swear to God. I swear. What did you just feed me? I is just it? need some shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the uh, Kyle, the actor, uh, mm-hmm. yes, he, yes. he is trying to figure out how to like let go, and he talks to one of the deadbeat dads. Like of, the like, king of the deadbeats. Yes. Yeah. Jeff and uh, bonds, was it Jeff Daniels? Bonds, no relation to and bonds what? with him. Yes, to what? <laughs> <laughs> the actor. <laughs> the and th- and then he, at the end of it, he gets the Lost Boys call back, and all that goes out the window. Yep. Like, yep. yep, man. Yeah, this was this was a hilarious episode. No, nah, this was and and they tier. are they during all this they Jennifer Garner realized a role of like oh you could be our general whatever i could get like you our, back our, our liaison that would, he's multi frame right. like yeah. he's in several of the manser movies that would get you back and like ah yeah. crap they're about to make him famous again which is going to put him back in lizzie kaplan's orbit yeah so yep. that's going to happen yep. next episode well, also, i don't know if he wants oh, yeah because he i definitely in the last episode it makes me th- realize because i thought he'd just given on ap- acting in all altogether mm-hmm. but he actually like he when he's, he's he, she's inadvertently finding helping him find the joy in it again yeah and that's he likes, gonna, he likes acting but he doesn't like the business he, he doesn't want like that to be his job he doesn't want that to be his job yeah so if he could maybe be like a honestly a teacher run a class uh i, I think the fact that he likes, he likes someone the in the business now is gonna yeah. make him cross that line and i i swear yep. that so i think that's yep. gonna happen next episode and then if we've got two I more agree. that last one is gonna have lizzie kaplan come back and it's gonna uh-huh. make him choose 
Yep. I, yeah, and I, I hope I hope it's a make him choose and not a fuck. And I think up. I think Lizzie Kaplan yeah. will represent the fame of it. Yeah. And he will yeah. go with Jennifer Garner and go he'll he'll go behind the scenes. But he'll she's never gonna be on be, screen. But Garner's gonna be so fucking gun shy about getting left. Yeah. Yeah. Are we, are we being treated on yet? I, I can't. I, God damn it! I love this show. But here's the thing: there's there's no way they're planning on making another season of this, right? They've got to know not no. to leave us with a cliffhanger. They've got to be aiming for an ending. Yeah, I well, really hope that they. You just can't. End it. I'm surprised they got all these fucking people back for one. Like, I know, right? I mean, they didn't every the, time. Like, what was the budget for getting yeah. all these fucking? Jane people? Lynch like, isn't back every time. Megan Mullally. Oh, right. Jane, back yeah. Every, Jane know. Lynch is yeah. basically a special cameo. Yeah. 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 I yeah I hope Lizzie Kaplan's not on IMDb as being in it, so it's possible. But Maybe I I'm feel wrong. like they have to. They have to bring her well, back. Well, they've done that before with IMDb, where they've kept it off. Yeah, it. I hope they do. W- why mention her at all? At her, her yeah. at all? You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's the obvious place to take the story, and I hope they I hope they yeah. do. I hope they do yeah, it well. Same. I mean, I have pretty much a pretty big amount of faith in these guys doing it. So. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's another great episode. I I can't wait for more, and I don't want it to be over again. Roy, I, how do I eat it? Should I eat it? Exactly. <laughs> Stop saying exactly. Well, uh, that that will wrap things up for us this week. Uh, thank you, Les. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Randy. Thanks, dudes. Uh, thank you to Max for our for our topic suggestion, Hell which yeah. I hated, but you guys liked. And uh, thank you to all our patrons. If you want to go become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash TV dudes. Listen to us talk about Guy Ritchie, which we are going through the remainder of his movies the next couple weeks. And uh, also there's hundreds of hours of bonus content over there. And uh, until next time. TV dudes out. I feel like we should smash a bust at the podcast or something. Maybe I'll figure out how to say it in Korean. Right. The TV dudes is an independently run podcast out of Austin, Texas. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV dudes. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TV dudes. All the music for our show is done by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to the TV dudes.com. I'm Randy Lander. I'm Les Weiler. And I'm Kyle Scott. Thanks for listening. <laughs>